Okay, it's your turn. Toss out something really vile. I would, but I can't lift you. <laughs> oh, that one's about me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most savage moments from The Nanny. Now, this steak is a little tough. So is life. <laughs> and then you die. For this list, we're looking at the times the characters from this 90s sitcom threw the best shade with plenty of style and flair. What's your favorite sassy quote from The Nanny? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Fran's self-burn. Is there anything more savage in the dating world than getting stood up? What do you say? You want to give this Lenny another half an hour? Oh, no way. The guy stood me up. Boy, you'd think that he would want to meet the first millionaire woman astronaut who opened for Streisand. To the younger generation, that's like getting ghosted but to your face. When Fran gets nervous about her date with pen pal Lenny, Mr. Sheffield convinces her to go and even waits with her. As they share a drink, Fran points out some lonely, desperate woman across the bar. I mean, at least I'm not that broad over there. Would you look at her? <laughs> desperate look in her eyes, boozing it up. However, she soon learns that she's actually looking at her reflection. We all tend to be a little self-critical, but that was brutal. Fran eventually gets an explanation about her date's absence. And all we can say is, poor Lenny. When I came in and saw you with that great-looking guy, I knew I could never compete with him. The only person to emerge unbruised from this situation is Mr. Sheffield. Number 9. How Val Mentally Declutters Val's not exactly the brightest bulb, but she means well, which provides plenty of hilarity. It says size nine in the color moss. Nine M-O-S means nine months, sweetie. <laughs> well, forget it, some will be over by then. As Fran prepares to find out the sex of her baby, or babies as she'll later find out, Val offers some tips to help her find peace of mind. She shares that she uses visualization to declutter her brain, all of it. Which actually explains a lot. I visualize a tiny housekeeper walking in my ear and cleaning out my whole brain. <laughs> I cut it back to once a week, Val. Fran suggests that perhaps she cut back on this routine as her imaginary housekeeper is maybe a little too thorough. All we're saying is that Val must have one powerful imagination. Maybe you should go with Brighton on all these college tours. Yeah, you know what? I think it would take your mind off all your worries. That's a fantastic idea, Val. It might be harsh, but hey, we were all thinking it. And we are sure that Fran meant it from the heart. Number 8. Grandma Yetta gets more action than Cece. Niles practically torments Cece as a hobby. Maxwell, I have found the perfect subject for our one-person play. Your sex life. And one of his favorite subjects to make digs about is her non-existent sex life. In a particularly savage comeback, he suggests that she's been alone for so long that one side of her bed is gathering dusts. Oh, don't you have something to dust off? How about the left side of your bed? In this episode, Cece's elated that Fran and Mr. Sheffield are at odds and thinks nothing can bring her down. But Niles is like, hold my sponge. He tells Cece about the activities that occurred the night before between Grandma Yetta and her lover. And suddenly, Miss Babcock is not so cheery after all. Aged 80, living in a home, got a heap of good loving last night. <laughs> and you? It's so simple yet brilliant, and definitely worthy of the bow he takes after she leaves. Number 7. Fran Gets Fired For this moment, we're going back to the first episode. Not just that, we're heading all the way back to the opening scene. If you recall, She was working in a bridal shop in Flushing, Queens, till her boyfriend kicked her out in one of those crushing scenes. Yes, not only does the series begin with Fran getting dumped, but she loses her job to her ex's new girlfriend. Ouch! But it brings her to the Sheffields, and her first impression of the kids is hilariously and brutally honest. That one's got no personality. This one's got multiple personalities. <laughs> And Brighton. Brighton? Where's Brighton? Still, she gets fired for the second time in the very same episode. Luckily, Mr. Sheffield quickly realizes he's better off with Fran Fine in his life. You feel terrible about this whole damn thing. And if you could, you'd get down on your hands and knees and apologize. <laughs> Miss Fine! Apology accepted! Ma, pack my things! He wants me back! Number 6. A Night of Good Cluckin'. 
it won't be surprising that Niles will make regular appearances throughout this list. I'm just responding to what you said. I didn't say a word. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't say anything? I distinctly heard you say something about the asylum. Are you insinuating that I am in some way... After all, he loves to mess with Cece and can often be merciless. In one particularly hysterically ruthless prank, he spots Cece creating a romantic ambiance in Mr. Sheffield's office. Maxwell, darling, is that you? <laughs> Don't turn around. He can't let the opportunity pass him by, and he sneaks up behind her, whispering seductively in her ear. He tricks her into believing he's Maxwell. <laughs> We don't know what's funnier, watching Cece cluck like a chicken or her reaction when she discovers the truth. Did you think I was him? <laughs> if you tell anyone about this... Oh, I'd never do that. We need the eggs. ...does, however, lead to their first kiss later that night. Is this what they meant when they said all's fair in love and war? Number 5. Sibling Rivalries If you have siblings, you'll know just how brutal they can be. From day one, we see this with the Sheffield kids, when Brighton throws this less-than-kind jab at his older sister. Well, we gotta make Maggie beautiful. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Shut up, Brighton. Hey, be nicer to your sister. Why, because we're a family? Yes, that's right. Luckily, Fran fires back with a hilarious zinger of her own. In fact, the older two often have to save the best shade for each other, such as this exchange over Brighton's guitar. He walks around the house all day with his guitar, and he doesn't even know how to play. Hey, you wear a bra. <laughs> hey, at least I've actually seen one. He doesn't even need his sister around to make a jab at her expense. Little Gracie isn't exempt from this savagery either, as her big bro makes a dig at her new friend. Sweetie, sweetie, tell your father who's coming over after school. Oh yeah, I've got a new friend. <laughs> and does this friend exist outside of your mind? Siblings, eh? Can't live with him, can't live without him. Number four. Little Sydney Sheffield. It's rather uncommon to see Cece get the upper hand on Niles, and it's even rarer to see them on the same team. You know, Niles, this is the best cup of coffee you've ever made. Well, in honor of our new alliance, I must confess, this is the first time I've ever put it in a clean cup. But when they join forces, you do not want to be their target. Just ask Fran. Anyway, in this season five episode, Niles tries to convince Cece that there are four Sheffield children. And what? Oh, for heaven's sake, he's your favorite, little Sydney. <laughs> there are four? So, when she brings home an unfamiliar little boy, he panics that he's gone too far this time. After he frantically runs out of the room, it's revealed that this has all been one enormous prank. We know Niles can be ruthless, but tricking him into believing he's an accomplice to abduction? Now that's really evil. You promised us 50. <laughs> If you'd remembered the part about needing your insulin, you'd be getting 50. Number three, The Thing. Remember how Mr. Sheffield finally confessed that he loves Fran in the season three finale? And how in the following episode he takes it back? Oh my God, you're taking back The Thing? Please, Miss Fine, I mean, in the heat of the moment, sometimes people just blurt things out. You blurt it prematurely? Yikes, right? We cannot imagine anything harsher than the man of our dreams professing his feelings for us and then taking them back. Surely there should be a no backsies rule on something like that. How long are you going to torture me with this? I'm not going to torture you about it. That's why I came in here, to tell you that I'm over it. Oh, really? No. Took it back. How's it feel? It becomes a running gag over the next couple of seasons, with Fran never failing to find opportunities to bring it up, while Niles desperately tries to find out what the thing is. And when he does, he has some strong feelings. Did you just say that you told Miss Fine that you loved her? Mm. And then you took it back? Uh. That's it, isn't it? That's the thing! Oh, I could kick you in the seat of the pants! Well, at least it all works out in the end. You've told Miss Fine I love her. Mm -hmm. oh, what else is new? <laughs> oh. oh, yes, I didn't take it back. Oh, congratulations! Number two, Fran's all alone. The only person more desperate to see Fran married than Fran herself is her mother Sylvia. When her mother Yetta confusingly mistakes the Sheffield kids as Fran's biological children, Sylvia wastes no time setting her straight. My Yetta! Oh, my little pizzler! <laughs> 
Oh, they're all their father. They got nothing from you. Not only are her words incredibly harsh, but the volume at which she delivers them just rubs salt in the wound. Fran doesn't have any children. She's not married. She's all alone. <laughs> Louder, Ma. I don't think they heard you. In Uruguay! Well, you might say that no one knows how to deliver a burn quite like your own mother. Of course, Fran eventually marries, and Sylvia's angry eyes during the if anyone objects portion of the ceremony speak for themselves. If anyone here can give good cause as to why these two should not be married, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. <laughs> Do not mess with Sylvia Fine or her daughter's love life, because you will not emerge unscathed. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Fran's tight dress. Some people like to show off their curves, and others like to draw attention to their organs. You think Mr. Sheffield will be able to see my tattoo in this? <laughs> Fran, he'll be able to see your liver in that. No time for divas. Mr. Sheffield teaches Gracie's classmates about the brutal showbiz world. Andrea, love, you're not blending in. You're upstaging everyone. My mother says my voice is a gift. Well, return it. Chester hates Cece. The dog isn't this woman's best friend. Oh, Maxwell, how thoughtful! Fluffy mm. <laughs> and a good judge of character. Cece isn't a fan of Fran's fuzzy coat. Those poor Muppets. Oh, Nanny Fine, cute coat. <laughs> how many Muppets had to die for that? A conversation worthy of garden fertilizer. Fran Fine always says it as it is. Learn how to get along with all kinds of different people, even people she doesn't particularly care for. Too bad we didn't have this conversation out in the garden. The plants would have loved the fertilizer. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the singing telegram. Yes, Niles again. Only this time, we're talking about how he loves to fuel the flames of Cece's unrequited love for Mr. Sheffield and her jealousy of Fran. Mr. Sheffield, what are you doing in your room? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. While his less than generous birthday surprise was a real contender, nothing could beat the singing telegram he sends after Maxwell and Fran's engagement. Cece opens her front door and endures a hysterically abrasive performance. Fran and Maxwell are engaged, it looks like you're a loser. She'll be happy all her days and you'll become a boozer. However, she's not quite as entertained as the rest of us. He also wastes no time in showing her the ring when she stops by later on. You haven't seen a ring. Well then, Cece Babcock, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's beautiful. This has got to be one of his most creative burns. Niles has really gotten savagery down to a fine art. She was working in a bridal shop in Flushing Queens till her boyfriend kicked her out in one of those Christian scenes. Don't put that in. 